Okay, hello, this is Dr. Janes, and today I'm going to talk about uh, programming the uh, TNC Duino 4.0. It's got a screaming fast clock speed of 600 megahertz. And actually, I think you can overclock it too, but I'm not going to risk damaging it. Um, <clears throat> but at these, uh, at these speeds, you can uh, do some pretty amazing things. You can uh, create some uh, real fast oscillators that are, have high performance. And uh, I, b I built some um, for my uh, that can drive uh, things at uh, Tesla coil frequencies, and but but I, I have to run them in burst mode, so they have to take a little break because uh, it takes a long time to actually do the analog read if you want to be able to control it that way. And I, m I might look at a faster, see if I can figure out a faster way to or more efficient way to do that. But um, right now this is an audio oscillator. Um, it goes up to uh, 27 kilohertz, very high performance, uh, truly digital. I mean, I, I've looked at other uh, kits oscillator oscillator kits, and they can't do this type of frequency. This is this is very fast. Anyway, um, <clears throat> so uh, I did a different video before where I just I showed how to um, make a program using the the uh, loop just counting the loop numbers, but this is going to be actually more accurate. I'm going to access the internal clock on this guy. And um, then what that will allow you to do is not only is it going to be very accurate in the uh, oscillator frequency, but um, it's going to allow you to multitask and do several different things at the same time. Okay, so let's uh, get into this. Okay, so here's our Arduino with the um, signal generator using the uh, internal clock, and uh, let's let's just take a look at the scope over here. Okay, so I have this probe hooked up to the scope, or to the Arduino pin out, which I believe is what, what pin is that? I think it's thirteen. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so here's our, uh, I'm sorry, it's uh, TNC Duino, I'm calling it an Arduino, TNC Duino 4.0, and um, there we go, there's the max uh, frequency it can generate, 27.8 kilohertz, and let me twiddle the knob, and uh, Can actually go as, as low of a frequency as you want. Okay. But uh, this is around 2 kilohertz I have with the uh, multiplier set the way it is. Okay. Okay, so there's a little bit better view of the. Uh, TNC Duino with uh, our oscope trace. Okay, so I have my probe here. And uh, measuring the frequency there. That looks very stable, huh? This is probably the most accurate way to generate a uh, frequency because it's going right off the internal clock. Okay. Okay, so here's our sketch, and I'm just going to go through this. It's a pretty short sketch, and I'm going to talk about um, what these different things are. So we're going to have a couple, we're going to assign a bunch of variables <coughs> here, and actually let me, um, I'm not using these guys, so let me comment these out. These are for future use because I'm going to be doing some other interesting things with this program. So the first one is cycles, so we're going to use this integer to read the number of clock cycles here. Uh, this is the internal clock of the uh, TNC Duino. <clears throat> so it counts up and it uh, actually overflows in a little over a couple seconds, so we need to worry about that also. And so we're going to um, in order to uh, determine our length of our um, frequency, we're going to uh, 
create another unsigned long int. We, we want it to be unsigned long int because we want it to be the, the biggest possible number that you can have so you get a longer time before it overflows because this is this is when it's going to overflow. And so um, this uh, next cycle is going to be when it when it uh, uh, changes the uh, oscillation from high to low or low to high. So it'll be like a half cycle uh, time in clock cycles of the TNC Duino. And uh, the next integer is uh, LED 13. So I'm going to uh, uh, set the output to pin 13. And I'm going to probably be doing some other things on the other pins since we can uh, multitask when we do this type of uh, procedure. And uh, then we're going to have a uh, <clears throat> uh, integer number, and this is going to uh, actually. I'm sorry, that was from the old one. Let, let me let me comment that one out too. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so we're not using these guys here. Let me, I'm sorry, I used the wrong slashes to comment. Okay, there we go. So those are commented out. And I think that this one is also not used here, this variable. I'm just modified an old sketch and I'm planning to change things. So, okay. So B, so we got rid of these variables, B is going to uh, equal uh, our analog read because we're going to read, um, we have the TNC Duino here and I put a um, potentiometer and it's going into uh, one of the top pins like tw pin 23 I think on this guy and so uh, we're doing an analog read on that guy and um, actually there's different ways to designate which pins that there are uh, which pins you're using uh, there's the actual pin number which this one's numbered in uh, the TNC Duino up to 23 or 24 or something like that and uh, there's a, a designation as the uh, analog pin so that pin is actually analog 9 because different pins can do different things on the TNC Duino and so uh, I'm just designating it as analog 9 because I happen to know that that pin is analog 9 okay <clears throat> so that's that's what this uh, analog pin ends so that's what this de designation is so this is different than pin 9 a9 is different than pin 9. That's, that's uh, specifying that it is the analog 9 pin. Okay. So um, I need to have a variable as a boolean that tells me whether uh, our. Uh, you know what? Let me, let me shoot this stupid thing. Okay. I need to have an analog that's boolean that tells me whether it was high or low before because I'm going to cycle it from high to low and low to high okay so this is a uh, P out which is a boolean which means it's either low or high or true or false depending on how you think about it and then uh, I'm going to add a multiplier which is going to uh, I'm going to put in there to slow to slow the clock frequency down uh, or slow the, the the oscillator frequency down when I'm uh, twiddling twiddling this knob if I, if I just put it in as a multiplier of 1, it's not going to change the frequency that much when I, when I change from the high uh, frequency to the low frequency. So I need to add a multiplier, and that will increase the range that the uh, analog input will produce in frequency on the output. So that this is basically a multiplier in, in the frequency range. Okay, I'm just multiplying up how many clock cycles it waits. So if I just did one, you wouldn't even see a difference in frequency when you twiddle that knob. 100 gave you uh, the span from, uh, you know, the max frequency set by the, the the read, the analog read, which was 27 kilohertz. 
and then by um, putting this multiplier in I'm able to go down to about 2 kilohertz at, at full range with, with the uh, potentiometer on the teensy duino. Okay? And if you don't, you don't want it to go down that far you could put less in here or you could, uh, if you don't want the top frequency to be 27 kilohertz, you could add some padding in there. You can, it's always, you can always slow it down. You just can't make it go faster than, than what it's going. Okay, <clears throat> here's uh, the void setup, and this, these first two commands are to set up so you can read the internal clock from the Teensy Duino. And as I said before, let me comment these out because I am not using these other pins yet. Okay. But, so I'm setting up uh, pin 13, LED, remember LED is equal to 13, so this is our pin output where our frequency standard is going to come out. And then I'm going to, before the whole thing starts, I want to do a read of the cycles to see what position we are in the in the clock cycle and I'm going to do an analog read and then I'm going to uh, use this number here cycles <clears throat> plus B the analog read times our multiplier which was remember a hundred up here and you can change that to be anything you want so this is going to be the number of clock cycles that it's going to flip to the from the state of high to low or vice versa so this is going to determine the frequency right here. So we're going to set our first ne next cycle uh, to be the number of cycles times uh, uh, plus the analog read times the multiplier. So we'll, this is what uh, we're going to wait for next before we do something. Okay. And uh, I'm just going to set everything. That I'm going to set the LED pin initially to, to low. Okay and then we're going to start our void loop so it, it executes this void setup one time so this is this kind of like a setup thing and then this loop is an infinite loop that it executes you know infinity until you turn the device off and so the first thing we're going to do in this loop is we're going to read the cycles because we're always going to have to be checking to see where we are and then we want to see if we've Okay, so we're going to read the cycles, so we see how many clock cycles we're at now. And then we're going to say, if if the uh, clock cycles has passed our next cycle, if we've gone past where we're supposed to flip from high to low or low to high, then we got to do something. we gotta, we got to flip that state. And um, then I was running it, and I realized that there's a, another issue that after a few seconds it overflows. What could happen is this uh, next cycle can get very close to the um, the max number which uh, is let me see I believe I wrote it down here Let's see if we can see this on this piece of paper it's like four million two hundred and ninety four uh, thousand whatever it's that that's the uh, max number that long int can have and so if you get very close to that it, it becomes very hard for you to um, have a next cycle that happens to be above that so you have to check to see if there's an overflow so here is an overflow and I put in uh, basically if, if you take the difference between the next cycle and uh, cycles and it's over two million you obviously overflowed the cycles went back down to zero and you're never going to uh, have a case where uh, cycles is greater than next cycles and until it counts all the way up again so several seconds later and if it, if uh, next cycles is is very close to the limit, it may skip past it again. So you could keep on. You may have to go several overflows before it it meets this condition. So you want to check to see if it overflowed. And so this this is a this is a OR symbol here. So it checks for the normal clock cycle here, and OR if it over, overflowed, check here. So if it overflowed, we definitely want to flip because we have uh, passed our limit here okay and so if either of these cases are true then I'm gonna go ahead and uh, read the analog input again and this does not have to be here and when I'm doing some other fancy things I may move this around but you should read this every so often because you you want to know uh, what, what, you, what you're twiddling on your knob here because if you don't know that 
you won't be able to change the frequency so it has to be read as often as you want to be able to update the frequency the new frequency so we're going to do an analog read here and then we're going to set the next cycle because we, we've already reached our, our our cycle that we're going to so we need to set up the algorithm for what the next cycle is going to be when we when we flip from high to low or low to high okay so we're setting the next cycle up uh, f further in clock cycles so we can uh, have a goal to meet there and then I'm going to say P out equals not P out so I'm going to flip it if it was in a state of high it's going to flip it to low uh, low is going to flip it to high remember this is a boolean so it's going to flip it from true to false or false to true or high to low however you think about it and then we're going to do a digital write here and that digital write is going to write the new state so it's going to be the opposite of whatever it was before and then we're done with this loop and so that is pretty much the complete program here for this uh, device so uh, it seems to work so anyway hopefully this helps you out in your projects okay this is dr. Jaynes and thanks for watching